Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to our webinar tonight. Uh, it's so good to be with you guys tonight, and I'm excited to just spend a little bit of time with you and to talk about this topic of anxiety. You know, I think it's something we all go through, but we don't always recognize it. We don't always fully understand it. Maybe sometimes we don't have the knowledge or the, you know, the tools to work through it, to, uh, to understand it and to navigate it. And so I think just having a time to come together like this is gonna be beneficial um, because of that. And also just because I think when it comes to anxiety, that's something that we're feeling more now than maybe we did before. You know, we all go through anxiety. It's something everyone experiences. But um, from my perspective and from yours talking to you, it seems like this past year, especially, it's been hard. We've gone through a lot. And so it seems like, you know, now more than ever, people are really experiencing anxiety to a greater degree than they might have in the past. And so when it comes to all that, you know, the goal tonight, we just want to debunk anxiety a bit. And there's a lot to it. We're not going to touch on everything because you can't do that in one night. But this is your first step in that journey of understanding anxiety a little better, um, of having the tools and the resources to navigate that, to um, work through that in your life. Um, so it doesn't end here. We're not going to give you three easy steps to fix anxiety 100% of the time. You're never going to experience it again. Um, I wish we could do that, but this wouldn't be a free webinar if we could do that. We'd have to charge a lot of money for that. Um, and so it's not, you know, we're not going to solve the problem. You, we're all going to experience anxiety, but we want to understand it better and we want to have those tools to get through it. And so that's what we're going to do tonight is just um, touch on that briefly. And we're also going to take your questions. And so um, if you have a question, as you hear what we're talking about, if there's something that stands out to you, maybe it wasn't clear, maybe you wanted a little more on that, or if you had something you came into this with that um, you don't hear us touch on tonight, we want to answer that. And so we have a chat here on Zoom. You can throw your questions in the chat, and we'd be happy to get to those. Um, and we'll try to mostly get to those at the end. And so if it seems like we missed it, we're just going to save that to the end probably. And as much as time allows, we'll go to get those questions. So if we haven't already met, my name is Evan. I am the online community director here at Lighthouse. And so what that means is I have the great privilege of getting to spend time with those who join us online, who connect with us online. And my job is really to serve the people who join our community online. So make sure that they've got the best possible online church experience, that they find connection and community and uh, that they can draw closer to Jesus as a result. And so I love doing that. It's a great privilege. And that's who I am. But I'm also here with Angela tonight. So Angela, um, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and your background? Yep. My name is Angela, and I've been attending Lighthouse a little over six years, I think. Um, I will be married 33 years in September. I have three boys, mm. a granddaughter who's two and a half, and a new baby on the way in January. Um, the Lord really has brought me um, into this calling of being a biblical counselor um, a few years ago, and it has just been a journey full of anxieties as well. Mm. That's, that's um, you know, I think that's great to hear that you've been through anxiety too. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things with anxiety, and I'm sure you're going to get to this, but it feels like sometimes with anxiety, we feel like we're not supposed to feel that, that it's not okay to feel it. It's not normal to have anxiety. Yeah. Um, we see people, whether it's counselors or pastors or this or that, that we think, you know, there's no way they would experience mm -hmm. that. And we think it's just something that we do. And so I think for me, it's encouraging to hear that even you, you know, yeah. someone who helps other people deal with anxiety, it's something that you go through as well. Yes, absolutely. And I will get to a few of those later. <laughs> totally. So that's <laughs> our talk. awesome. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we want to debunk anxiety tonight. We think, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions with anxiety. Sometimes we don't fully understand it. Uh, like I just touched on, I think sometimes we don't think it's okay to be anxious at all ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so um, to understand it, um, just maybe start with what is anxiety? Yeah. Well, I went to Webster's dictionary to find out a true definition of Always what anxiety is. Always a good is. resource yeah. for a definition. Yeah. Apprehensive uneasiness or nervousness, usually over an impending or anticipated ill, a state of being anxious. Now that can also be a physical sense that you get where you're sweaty, your um, pulse rate gets elevated. 
Um, and those signs are, are just from. Yeah, all kinds of circumstances things, right? in our lives and um, uncertainty that we'll be able to accomplish the task ahead of us. Totally. Yeah. And so like you just said there, you know, there's so many different things that can bring that about and mm -hmm. there's different symptoms of anxiety. Like we're going to experience that in different ways. And so I think it's good um, just to understand what that looks like, because there might be certain aspects of that, that, you know, we just, we don't really know how to identify that that is actually anxiety. That's mm -hmm. what I'm experiencing yeah, there. Yeah. So we all experience anxiety. And if you think someone hasn't, then you're already believing a lie that many of us actually believe at times. We see people who look like they have it all together, but what you are seeing in that moment is that they're choosing not to believe that lie. They're choosing to believe God's truth about them. They're choosing to believe that they are loved, that they were formed in their mother's womb, that there is a God who loves them and desires to draw close to them. Totally. Yeah. So maybe, you know, you see a couple of people on Zoom who are talking about the topic of anxiety and you think there's no way these people experience anxiety in their lives because yeah. uh, they're talking about anxiety. So surely they've got it all figured out. That's not something they deal with. They're speaking to this from a place of, you know, I've solved this problem. I don't experience this in my life. And that's just not the case. You're, it's not about not experiencing it, but it's knowing what to do when right. that comes about. When that does, yeah. Anxiety is really, it's real and everyone experiences it to some degree during their lifetime. Fear and anxiety can be very crippling if we allow it a place in our lives, if we allow it a place in our hearts. I know I went through quite a bit of anxiety this week preparing for tonight. Um, we are actually also getting ready to sell our home and to move in with my mother-in-law to care for her. Yeah. So just a lot of, um, you know, I, irons in the fire and choosing to believe that, yes, God has called me to do this, to do the Zoom session tonight um, and trusting him that he will be faithful. Totally. Yeah. I know you shared with me that you were feeling a little bit of anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes to doing online events like this and webinars, yeah. that's not something you've done a lot of in the past. That's true. And I was so encouraged when I heard that you're going through that because I think there's something special about mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you're talking about a topic, you know, that coming from a place of experience and that mm -hmm. I've been here myself and um, I'm not just talking to you about some notes or some, I read this book and this was good, it's, but you're like, I've been here myself. Mm -hmm. And so Absolutely. Um, that's, a, that's great to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, anxiety really starts with fear. Fear comes in first mm. fear of the, what ifs, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this doesn't work out? What if that does work out? And those, what ifs are actually predicting the future without God in that future. And we know that his word tells us that he's with us, that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So when we begin to have those, what ifs, um, it really can send us into a tailspin if we don't yeah. quickly nip those, um, in the bud. That's so true. Those, what ifs, you know, mm -hmm. I think we start imagining scenarios and mm -hmm. predicting the future, like you said, and, you know, maybe it's something simple, like maybe you know, you're waiting for your spouse to come home from work and they're taking a little longer than usual. And so, you know, you could think, okay, maybe they got pulled into a meeting. Maybe they're stuck talking to a coworker. Maybe there's a little more traffic than usual, but maybe your mind immediately jumps to, you know, there could have been a car accident. Maybe they're hurt right now. And maybe you start even picturing, you know, like what that could mm -hmm. look like at that scene of the accident. And so, you know, just like one example, have you ever found yourself you know, like creating this future in your head of like, this is probably what's happening. And you have no reason to believe that there's no evidence of that, but you take this one yeah. thing and in your mind, you start building out this terrible future about it um, with nothing to actually lead you to feel that way, but just imagining that what if, and not just any what if, but um, oftentimes, you know, those worst case scenarios, right. I think yeah. that's uh, something so true and something that we all run into. And um, even, you know, just in this past year with the pandemic, that seems like something that we've all um, kind of experienced, you know, you turn on the news yeah. and you hear about these what if scenarios or, you know, if this happens and this could happen. And so I think, uh, yeah, now more than ever, even that's something that we've got to be really careful about and uh, just try to identify if we do see that coming into our lives. 
Yeah, I know my boys can attest to this when they were growing up and teenagers, they'd be out for the evening. And, um, you know, if they weren't home right when they said they would be, I would, you know, picture that they were in a ditch dead somewhere. And so we really can um, take those what ifs to the extreme. And that is not where God wants us to live. He wants us to live with peace and knowing that he is there um, for us. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I like the scripture, um, Luke 12, 25, 26. Um, and which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Mm. If then you are not able to do a small thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? I know I would love to add an extra hour to the day, but I'm unable to. So, you know, everything else that I'm anxious, if I can't do that, then I should not be anxious. Yeah, that's so true. So, you know, not just what ifs, um, you know, where we fill in the blank about things that have maybe like low probability, no probability of happening, but even things that maybe that is a possibility, you know, I don't know which way this is going to go. It could easily go either way, but I don't have any control over this outcome. And so just yeah. being able to identify that I am experiencing anxiety about something that I cannot control. Mm -hmm. And so from there, being able to see that, you know, this is something that my anxiety is not going to help me one way or the other. It's not going to change the outcome of this. And so it's just adding all this stress, you know, physically on my body. It's, you know, it's causing that harm, but I, nothing's going to come of that. Right. Yeah. I like um, how Ed Welch in a book that we will put in the by at the end, um, Student's Guide to Anxiety, um, he uses an analogy to explain how God is with us. So there's a teacher that gives us an assignment to the class and the reaction to the assignment isn't very positive. And mm -hmm. the students are all upset. How are we gonna complete this assignment? How are we gonna get it done? And the teacher says, you will have everything you need to complete the assignment. Mm -hmm. Our assignment is to trust God, that knowing that he will be with us every step of the way in our life journey. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. you know, I think we run into different mm -hmm. situations and yeah. we think, well, you know, I haven't done this yet, or I don't have this, or I haven't prepared enough. And yeah, I could see in my own life where anxiety comes from that, from thinking that I don't have this, I'm not prepared, I'm not ready. But you're right, it's really, I guess you could say it's like, it's that one step of trusting yeah. God first yeah. and the rest can come from that. Yeah, yeah, I read a, a book recently, Suffering is Never for Nothing by Elizabeth mm -hmm. Elliott. And she was a wife of a missionary. They were on the mission field and her husband was killed tragically. Mm -hmm. And she went back to the mission field. And the one thing that she really felt that God told her to do was to do the next thing. Wow. And so we can feel very overwhelmed by the large task. Like I said, we're packing up our house yeah, <laughs> and totally. moving. And so the other night I kind of had a little bit of a meltdown, um, overwhelmed by all the tasks. And so what I've determined is I'm going to take one room at a time yeah. and pack up one room at a time and get it ready to stage the house. And so I think that's all that God asks us to do. It's to take one step, you know, you know, toward, towards him, but also one step, just worrying about, to, not worrying, but focusing on today and not worrying about tomorrow. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that can come about in so many different aspects. Um, I've even experienced that, you know, different projects, things like that at work, mm -hmm. where I look at everything that has to be done. And I see, you know, from the beginning to the end, this needs to happen. This is how it's going to progress. And I'm looking at this whole thing. Um, and it can be overwhelming and, you know, same thing in different scenarios in life, but you just got to look at that one first step that you're taking. Um, cause when you look at anything that you're trying to do, anything you're trying to work towards and you look at it in its totality, it can be really overwhelming, yeah. but it's so much of that. Just finding that first step that you can take working towards that first step and then finding the next step from there. It's always that next step from here. It's not you know, all the steps and doing them all at once, but yeah. somehow our minds just like to uh, put us into that trap where we see it all. We feel like we've got to do it all. And mm. that's just not the case, is yeah. it? Yeah. I know for me, when I do experience those times of anxiety, I try to quit quickly catch myself and confess my unbelief, mm. right? Because we said the what ifs is, pro is projecting the predicting the future without God in it. So when sure. I begin to do that, I need to take a step back and say, Lord, please forgive me for not trusting you because your word is true. And your word tells me that you will be with me and you will not forsake me. 
So I think that's also an important piece is just admitting, yep, I can't do this. Lord, forgive me for my unbelief and not trusting that you've called me to do yeah. whatever the task is. That's so good. And just having yeah. that in your mind that if I mm-hmm. identify that I'm going through anxiety right now, I'm, I'm feeling this, this mm-hmm. is what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, just knowing that I need to pause. I really need to reflect on that and apply that to my life. That um, this is something that God doesn't say, you know, just generally, but specifically to me, that's a promise for me that he'll do that in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it's interesting that the enemy will attack us um, and he will attack the very thing that God says about us as far as who we are in Christ. And so he'll come in and try to tell us lies about ourselves, tell us that we're not worthy, tell us that we can't do this task that God has asked us to, but we have, are created in God's image. We are his sons and daughters. You know, I love the worship song um, that we sing that has a phrase if I'm still here, you're not done. Hmm. So, so good. As long as we are still here on this side of heaven, yep. God has a plan for us to reach the lost and make disciples. And we must fight against the enemy, taking captive of those thoughts that try to destroy us and tell yeah. us who we are not. That's so true. I think, you know, there's definitely an aspect of anxiety that comes from not understanding who we are, that as a result of not seeing who we are, then not mm-hmm. seeing ourselves the way that God sees us, yeah. um, that having the wrong image of ourselves, the wrong understanding of ourselves, and who we are in Christ, that we might think that we can't do something, mm-hmm. that we're not capable, that we're not qualified, that um, you know yeah. someone else is better suited to this, that I can't do this, um, and maybe that's at work. Maybe you know maybe um, there's a project that you've been assigned to, and you think that. I can't do this. You know, so-and-so does this so much better. I'll never measure up to this person. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you see other parents on Instagram or other spouses mm-hmm. uh, and you judge your relationships with those people by that standard. And you think mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm not qualified in this way. I don't meet the same standard that this person does. I'll never be able to parent or um, love someone the way I see other people do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in all these different aspects of our lives, um, you know, maybe we're not intentional in, um, understanding who we are in Christ and the way that God sees us, our identity becomes more about the way we think the world sees us. And oftentimes mm-hmm. not even how the world sees us, yeah. but um, just wrapped up in that. And so with that false identity, obviously you're gonna have a lot of anxiety, yeah. aren't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's so easy to get wrapped up into what the world says and not always going back to what God says about us, that we are loved, that we are valuable. Um, Yeah, I know even tonight (laughs) when I was asked to do this, I was like, are you sure, Lord? (laughs) Um, But, you know, he he called me to do it. And so I needed to be obedient and to trust him that he would be with me along the way. So and not listen to those voices um, in our head. I love what Pastor Sammy says sometimes is that you will lie to yourself more than anyone. And we do. We lie to ourselves. We tell us ourselves that we're not worthy, that we're not good enough. We won't measure up. That's so true. Yeah. And, you know, it's crazy to hear um, that you felt that because listening to you, Mm -hmm. um, I'm just hearing all this amazing content that you put together. (laughs) It's coming across so clearly to me. And so um, I think that right there is an example of that, of believing that I can't do this when in reality, um, God has given you everything you need and he's helping Mm -hmm. you through this. So uh, how many of you guys who are watching would say that uh, just a big thank you for Angela for uh, being here tonight, for sharing all this wisdom that she has, um, that she's doing an incredible job of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think moving forward, just a couple key things that we need to remember is that we need to focus on today. God has asked us to walk today and that not to worry about tomorrow. His grace is sufficient for today. It will be there for tomorrow as well, but he's calling us to walk today and that he holds the future. He is a good good father. Mm, that's so true. Um, you just like we were talking about when taking that first step, just thinking just about one day at a time. Um, you know, when we look at everything, this and this and this, and, you know, start thinking about what about in five years from now, uh, we can get so overwhelmed and filled with anxiety as a result. And so that is so true. That's so good to just focus on today, um, just where we're at right now. And what is that step that I should take that God's pointing yeah. me towards. 
I think another thing is to share your anxieties with the Lord. You know, we talk about being in a relationship with Jesus. And so what does that look like? That's a constant conversation with them. I know for me throughout the day, um, constantly crying out to him, help me with this. I can't do this. I know you've called me to this, but I don't quite feel like I'm able to do that. So just being in a state of um, receiving his grace and walking in the path that he has before. So I like what Psalm 62, eight says, it says, trust him at all times, O people, pour out your heart before him. And so just that, um, you know, we were talking about worship earlier, sure. we were talking about worship and how important it yeah. is to pour our hearts out to God. Like he so desperately wants us to tell him how we're feeling and to surrender those anxieties and those fears to him and leave them at the cross, knowing and trusting him that he will take care of us. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I love the worship example you mentioned. I think mm -hmm. that's a great way to do that is to just um, put on some worship music, maybe um, mm -hmm. in the car, in the house, um, whatever you're doing at work, um, and to just really spend a moment in worship, um, you know, reflect on what that song is saying about God, about um, your relationship with him and uh, just uh, focus on how good he is. Yeah. I think a lot of times I know for me, when I can get in trouble with my anxieties is I'm looking inward mm. and not looking outward, not keeping my focus on Jesus. I um, thinking of the story of Peter and the disciples in the boat. And yeah. when they see Jesus so far off and Peter, you know, when he recognizes that Jesus, he wants to go and run towards him. So Peter gets out of the boat and begins to walk across the water. And then he realizes his circumstances aren't exactly what he thought like the waves are gone and his focus gets downward um and not on christ and yeah. so that's when he began to sink and i think for us our focus needs to be on jesus and when we start to look in where we start to feel that we're not good enough we need to lift our eyes up yep. and that's one thing that worship can get the focus off ourselves and back on the rightful place Totally. Yeah. yeah. So worship is a great tool for that. Um, you know, we've got a lot of great songs we sing here. And so if you hear a song that um, on Sunday service, whether you're watching it online or um, in the room here, um, if, if you just, if you're experiencing one and you feel like that just really causes you to reflect on the nature of God and um, that you just really feel like there's any songs in particular to just help you worship, um, you know, save those on your phone, on Spotify, on YouTube, however you listen to music. Mm -hmm and um, maybe have those available for those times. Yeah. Um, prayer is another great option that you just talked about, but mm -hmm. I think sometimes we don't uh, understand how we can do that. Like, especially when we're new uh, believers, I think sometimes mm -hmm. we look at prayer and we think there's all these rules that it has to happen <laughs> yeah. in this specific yeah. setting that, um, you know, like I've got to have my head bowed, my eyes closed, mm -hmm. my hands together. Um, and it has to be at least this length. It has mm -hmm. to fit this format. It has mm -hmm. to start with this. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you're driving down the road, going to an event, going to work, um, going, you know, into something that's maybe causing you some anxiety, um, you know, it might not be the best idea to close your eyes and bow your head <laughs> behind the wheel, but yeah. that doesn't mean you can't yeah. come to God in Absolutely. that moment. Um, mm -hmm. I think prayer really should look like not just something we do in the morning before work or before we go to bed, but, you know, throughout the day, like, you know, when we have relationships with people, you know, if I just talk to my wife, you know, for five minutes in the morning, mm -hmm. um, her relationship wouldn't be that great. Yeah. But I, I talk to her, you know, I send her text messages all day. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a couple words. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling her what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm asking her about something. Yeah. And I think in the same way, that's what prayer should look like. Mm -hmm. That, you know, we're going through something. I'm a little nervous about something. I'm feeling anxiety or fear. I can come to God and it could be, I can really, you know, get into it if I have the time. Or if I don't have the ability in this moment to spend a lot of time on it, I can come to God in just a few words and still um, just yeah. um, explain what's going on, ask for his help in this. And I think when that becomes a habit throughout the day, in all situations, I think that's something that can be really beneficial as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just sharing with him whenever you can, whenever you feel that need. Um, like I said, giving him your anxieties, um, talking with him. It's a relationship with Jesus. Um, like you said, if you were only talking to your wife once or twice a day, that wouldn't be a relationship. And she might be a little upset about that. Totally. God does not get upset at us when we don't talk with him, but he desires for us to draw near to him and to tell him how we're feeling. He knows, but he wants to hear us say it. 
Um, the other thing we can do is when we begin to have those what ifs, we can stop and confess it to the Lord, mm. asking him for help to trust him. Lord, I'm sorry for not trusting you in this situation. And I surrender that. Mm. Um, I think the surrendering, it's, it's an ongoing thing. It doesn't, it's not a one and done. Okay. I've, I already surrendered that. So I shouldn't have a problem with that, but that's not true. You need to continue to surrender it um, and not feel guilty for that. But the Lord wants us to surrender his, our anxieties yeah, to him. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think um, another thing I think you've mentioned is just reflecting on things he's done in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So just, I do my devotions every morning and I journal and I often will journal of his blessings to remember. So getting ready for this tonight and with everything else going on in my life, I reflected back to how he had been faithful in the past. And that really helped me to continue to take the next step to do the next thing um, because he is faithful. He cannot not be faithful. It is his nature mm. to be faithful. Um, so just, you know, resting in that. And, and I understand people's circumstances are, are hard. Life is really hard. Um, but he is there. Absolutely. And he is, you know, the Holy Spirit is there to comfort us. And I think yeah. that reflection is so important. You know, how often do we come to God when we're going through something hard, when we mm -hmm. feel like we need help, mm -hmm. but then do we take the time to reflect on that? Um, you know, sometimes I think God answers our prayers. He helps us through things that we've come to him in prayer for. But if we're not intentional about slowing down and processing, we might miss, um, you know, recognizing that and thanking him for those yeah. times that he's been faithful because, you know, we just get so busy in life that it's easy to just come to him as you're going through things, but then not really just pause and think, you know, like I was going through this. I was so anxious about this. I was so stressed about this. Um, I was so overwhelmed about this, but I gave this to God. And now looking back, I see how God helped me through that. Mm -hmm. And so I think just having that habit of, you know, assessing that and then um, remembering it, maybe make a note on your phone, um, just some examples of how God has really been faithful um, in your life and different things that you've gone through so that the next time you're feeling just filled with anxiety or filled with anything um, that, you can go back to that. You can say, you know, this is what I've seen God do in my life before. I know he's faithful um, because that's who he is because of what I've experienced in my own life. And so being able to reflect on that, I think that could be so valuable yeah. when anxiety pops up. Yeah. Get, to give a testimony of what God's done in your life is so important because that may encourage someone else. But I, as you were talking, I was thinking of our community, our small groups. Sure. To be in a small group, sharing with people your life, doing life together. And when you do have those good time, you know, good testimony of what God's done in your life, you share that with the group. And then maybe there's another time where you're really struggling. And if you share that, then you have people that will remind you, remember when God came through on this and he provided for that and he was with you with that. And so I think that's just so important to reflect back. So yeah, yeah. and think, important to be in a small group. Totally. You know, <laughs> um, I'm on staff of the church, so it's in my contract. I have to mention small groups, but um, seriously, I've been benefited personally so much by small groups in so many different ways. But uh, one yeah. of those would be just having friendships that even last um, beyond the group. Um, I've even met my wife in a small group, but <laughs> so if you're single, small groups are a great option, but, um, you know, just having those people that you can do life mm -hmm. with, you know, we talk about words like connection, community. And sometimes I think we don't really fully understand that because we just throw these words out there. But what that looks like is having people that you do life with, because life is not easy, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's easy to, um, hear things like this and think that, um, you know, it should all be good. It should be all easy, but that's not the case. That's true. Um, you yeah. know, this life is not always going to be easy, mm -hmm. but one way to really work through those harder times is to have people to support you through mm -hmm. them. That if I'm going through something, I have people I can talk to that about, that it's not all on me, but um, I can open up. And as a result, I've got people who are praying for me because I've um, told them what I'm going through. I've got people who can pour into me with encouragement. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's so great to just um, have encouragement from different people when I'm going through something and um, support, you know, I can get some great advice from people yeah. by just being honest, being transparent and having people that I can open up to if I'm going through something. And yeah. so um, if you don't feel like you have that, um, you know, small groups are a great option. There's other ways, but I think if you feel like you're alone in this, if you don't feel like you have someone who you could call or who you could text, if you're going through something, then I think that's a 
big next step to take out from this that uh, if you don't do anything else, um, one thing that would really benefit you mm -hmm. would be to seek out yeah. some connections, some friends mm -hmm. who can do life with you, who can support you, who can encourage you, who can be praying for you as you go through the harder times in life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the lies that the enemy tells us is that we're all alone, mm. that we're, you know, oh, you can't tell anyone you have anxiety. You can't reveal that because then they'll think you're, you know, maybe your faith isn't as much as you thought. Maybe you're not further down your line, your walk with the Lord than you, you should be. And so um, you have all, you have those lies going through your head. Um, and that's just from the enemy because everyone has those moments of uncertainty and anxiety. Um, and I think that's one thing, you know, if the enemy can isolate us mm -hmm. and keep us away from the people, then he's accomplished his task. So it is so important to be vulnerable with the right people and to share where you're at. Yep. Because, yeah. you know, when you don't have that group of people around you, sometimes you do think that you're alone. You think that mm -hmm. maybe it's not normal or okay to go mm -hmm. through anxiety. I'm glad that you mentioned faith. Yeah. Because I think there's a trap we fall into sometimes where we think, uh, especially as Christians, that it's not okay to have anxiety, that we think, um, and we look at a verse out of context or just from things we've heard from other people, we think that, you know, if we're saved, if, if we follow Jesus, mm -hmm. we shouldn't have anxiety in our life, mm -hmm. that um, if we do experience it, that it's a result of a lack of faith. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. We're all, you know, experience anxiety. Jesus himself, we read the Garden of Gethsemane, he actually, he sweat blood before his crucifixion. Um, he had fear, but it's what you do with that fear. It's not right. that we shouldn't experience it, right? But it's how we navigate it because it is okay. It's normal. And we're all going to experience anxiety and fear, but it's what we do with it, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I always say emotions are good. They're, you know, it's what you, it's the actions after that emotion and how you're going to handle it. So if you're able in the moment of anxiety to realize, you know what, wait, hold up. This is not how God wants me to live. I need to trust him. And so um, drawing closer to him is, is key. Knowing his word is key. Knowing what he thinks of you and what he says about you is key for you to navigate those times. And, you know, I don't want people to think that if you do these steps, everything will be great. Like life is hard. Oh yeah. And um, we need to be constantly relying, leaning on Jesus for the strength and the grace. That is yeah. so true. Yeah. yeah. Um, like we've touched on, you know, you think that if I follow Jesus, it should all be easy. It should all be good. And then you hear sermons or you come to an anxiety webinar and you hear, you know, we touch on these points and they're all true. They're all good. They're going to help you, but it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. Um, you know, there isn't, like I said before, there's not three easy steps that will um, make you never experience anxiety again. That will, uh, you know, we're going to go through these things. Yeah. And there are amazing tools and resources, um, you know, all these different steps we can take, but we also have to realize that this life is going to be hard. Uh, we're going to go through things and it's not about not experiencing them. It's just um, what we can do to get through it better in a more yeah. healthy um, productive, beneficial way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it just comes down to really spending that time with the Lord daily in the car, you know, before work, you know, in his word, worshiping, praying. Um, and I think the more, you know, like my experience this past week and that moment of bursting into tears and feeling overwhelmed, uh, it was, it was short lived. I'm, I'm still feeling a little, a little overwhelmed with all the irons in the fire, but I, it was short lived in that moment because I began to know this is what God is calling me to. And I need to be obedient in that mm. and trust him that he will provide that his grace is sufficient for me to walk out the task. So good. So, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, we've talked about a lot of different resources, a lot of different things you can do, um, personally, different practices, different habits, um, different steps you can take in your life. We've talked about the importance of community. It's so yeah. important to have people Absolutely. around you. And so these are things you can do, but obviously, you know, you're a counselor. Um, I think counseling is a great step people can take, but, you know, there's different levels of anxiety, different severities of anxiety, different types of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm going through anxiety and I'm not sure what my next step is, and maybe that's something that comes to mind, maybe I'm not sure if that's something I should do. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things I can think through as I try to like process where I'm at and, you know, the, those different next steps? Um, specifically for counseling, if I'm not sure about that, 
what are some things I should be thinking through as far as, is this a step I should take right now right. with where I'm at, what I'm going through? Well, I think that the first step is, do you have people around you that you can talk with? Do you have friends who are believers who can mm-hmm. speak you back or point you back to Christ and speak truth into your life? Are you in a small group? Could you approach your small group leader? Um, and I think when you've exhausted those avenues, then you should seek counseling um, because we're called to live in community totally. um, and to help each other um, through things. Um, so I think that would, that would be what I would seek out counseling makes sense yeah yeah awesome and so thank you guys um for uh, there's a whole bunch of comments here <laughs> i saw a lot of people um just saying thank you to you angela uh, for uh, sharing it has been this. a joy and a true honor to be here um yeah, yeah. and so we do want to take some questions i know there's at sure. least one in here that i'm gonna get to but um if you thought of anything else um as we've gone through this or like i said maybe there's something that you had coming into this that we didn't get to touch on definitely share that in the comments as well. Um, I do see one question from Gina who wanted to know um, any suggestions on during the day, the busy time of the day, how to quiet the mind. So things can get crazy and hectic during the day. Is there anything I can do to quiet my mind? Yeah, I think um, just taking a moment to breathe and to um, you know, if you're at work and you have opportunity, you have your phone, you know, open up scripture go to the Psalms. Um, Psalm 23 is a great, (laughs) you know, the Lord leads us by still waters. It's a great passage to reflect on. I think that's, um, you know, centering back to Jesus and, and um, that he loves you and that he is with you. Um, Yeah, that's good. That's great. Um, And then I see another question from Annie, um, just asking, can anxiety be chemical? Um, I, I I think so. I think with with um, with anxiety, there can be a chemical um, sure. reaction in the brain. Yes. Yep. I yeah. Think, you know, okay, yeah. all different aspects of mental depression, health. Depression, like there's um, all, there's many different levels of anxiety where depression plays into that as well. Yeah, and so I would so, think, and tell yeah. me if I'm wrong, but you know, when it comes to identifying is that the case then we talked a lot about next steps and just taking that one step mm-hmm. at a time mm-hmm. and so maybe you know you've done what you could personally you've found community maybe you've found counseling and so as you, as you progress through that I think that's maybe how you could identify right. that yes yeah and I I do know some people that are on medicine for anxiety I think sometimes you need to maybe be on medicine to even get to a point where you can begin to process um, things and how God loves you and what his word says Totally, because there's yeah. so many different types yeah. of anxiety. There's so many different causes of it. Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to that, there, you know, there's no one cause, there's no one answer. And there's yeah. a lot of different paths to getting through it. And mm-hmm. sometimes they're personal. Um, and so that's why you just take that one step at a time mm-hmm. so that you can ultimately find what's going to address um, yeah. your anxiety specifically, because right. it's going to be different for all of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see yeah. another question from Kelly. Um, do you have any suggestions to help your child that has anxiety because of things that have happened to mm-hmm. a family friend um, mm-hmm. and who has a lot of anxiety at night. Um, yeah. So when it comes yeah. to children specifically and helping yeah. your children, is there anything that you would? Yeah, I mean, I, I love this book. Um, I think even with a child, you could walk through it. There's a, very, there's a lot of um, good things in addressing. Let me just read a couple. Yeah, please. Um, uh, Take your time. The Lord is near you. Just, I'm reading just the the chapters, hold on. Yep. Um, Speak to the Lord, God is loving, God is strong, a walk with God. Um, There's also, um, I have a pamphlet at home, I didn't bring it, on how how to help your child with anxiety. We could, I could give that to Evan um, and get that information to you to, to walk with your child through that. Yep, definitely. Um, and we'll actually, we're going to send an email a little after this is over, um, just to have a link to the video. Um, we'll send out these books again so that you have all those names, but, um, if you think of it, include that too. Um, and then we can get that to you guys as well. Um, Pat did just ask you that book that you just mentioned. Could you just name the um, name of that book and the offer one more time? A student's guide to anxiety and Ed Welch is the author. And I'm going to post that in the chat for you guys as well. And so if you want to copy and paste it or screenshot it or anything Mm -hmm. like that, that's in the chat right now as well. So the other thing I would recommend just is anxiety, knowing God's peace. Sorry. Thank you. And um, again, I'm posting that in the chat. And so if you guys want to copy, paste, screenshot, anything like that, the title and the offer in the chat. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so it's a it's a 30 day um, devotional and there's reflection and two acts, two things that you need to do at the end of each day. Um, here's one of them. Meditate on Jeremiah 17, seven, hmm. journal about the fruit of trusting God, write these verses on a three by five card, read them often, let their truth remind you to turn your gaze upward. I love that. It's simple. Yeah. It's straightforward. It's yeah. practical. And that seems like it'd be really beneficial. Yeah. I think, you know, um, dealing with anxiety, I, I, I don't want to call it convincing. A friend of mine said, no, use the word train. We need to retrain our mind on how we think about ourselves um, and about who God is in our lives. So I think that's, that's really important. And I know the devotional will help you do that. Love it. Um, And then are any of our books you'd recommend? I think you had one more you were going to share. I had um, new morning mercies by Paul Tripp. Mm -hmm. It's also a daily devotional. Um, Very, very short. Um, one page, just really, really good stuff. Um, I love it. So again, you know, just something practical, very simple, straightforward. Mm-hmm. Devotionals are a great one. We should have touched on that too. And we just yeah, did, but, yeah. um, you know, something where you can start your morning in God's word. And so whenever you buy a book like that, if you're like me and you prefer digital, um, I love the YouVersion Bible app. There's a whole lot of great devotional plans on there as well. And they'll even do reminders on your phone where it pops up. And so yeah. there's different approaches for everyone, but, um, Starting the morning, God's word, um, mm-hmm. I think, um, with a devotional like that, uh, is something that could be really beneficial as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And so that is um, all those great resources. I don't see any other questions. If you do have them, please share them. But um, otherwise, I'm just going to pray for us in a moment um, mm-hmm. as we go. And um, again, I just appreciate all of you guys spending some time with mm-hmm. us. I hope this was beneficial. Another thing you can share in the comments, if there's anything else you want to hear on. So we're speaking on anxiety tonight, uh, but we want to address different topics that you're going through, um, whether that's something you're struggling with, that you're unclear on. And so if there's other topics in your life that you think um, it'd be helpful to have specific content and resources on, let us know that in the comments. Um, We're thinking that we're going to do one in July on relationships. There'll be more information coming on that soon. But if there's any topics that you want to hear about, you can let us know that. I do see one more question. My sister would like to speak with a counselor about something she's struggling with. She's afraid to speak to someone because she thinks they will want to put her on medicine due to a family history. Um, is there anyone, what would you say to someone who's got that fear of? So I, hmm, that's a good question. Yep. <laughs> I, I am actually a biblical counselor, uh-huh. so I am not licensed with the state. Sure. So I would not be able to prescribe medication. Um, I guess I would like to know a little bit more of why she struggles with being put on medication. Medication isn't always bad. Like I said, it can get you in the right mind to actually receive um, truth. So, yep. And so I guess um, with that one, you'd really want to just start to understand that fear and where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Probably would be a good first step. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. All right. Well, thank you guys. I don't see any of your questions. So I'm just going to pause real quick and pray Mm -hmm. um, for each and every one of us Mm -hmm. uh, as we go from here. And if you do have any questions, if there's anything that comes up, if there's any ways we can be praying for you, Mm -hmm. um, one great resource is LH chat. That's on our website. It's on our app uh, where you can get in touch with our staff. If you have questions, if there's something um, you want guidance on, if you'd want someone to pray for you, we have a team of people who would love the opportunity to do that. Um, You can reach us all week on our website and our app at LH chat. If you just want to have a one-on-one conversation with someone. And so definitely take advantage of that. But right now I just want to pray for us before we go. And so God, I just come to you and I thank you for this opportunity to get together and to speak to this topic of anxiety. Cause we know it's something that is uh, prevalent in our community that maybe we're facing now more than we did in the past. And so when it comes to that, I just thank you for this opportunity to get together, um, to talk about it, to be honest and transparent about it, hopefully to um, come to understand it a little better than we did before. And I just, I thank you for Angela. I thank you for the gift that she is to our community here, um, the knowledge that she brings, Lord, the wisdom. And I thank you for just, uh, for all that she shared and the way that she pointed us all to you tonight, Lord. I just pray that as we go, you'd help us all to keep our focus on you, God, and that when it comes to anxiety, that uh, you'd really just help us all to uh, take things away from tonight that uh, we can bring into our lives. So the next time anxiety pops up, that uh, there'd be practical next steps we remember, next um, just actions that we can take that would uh, help us, Lord, to get through that, that uh, when anxiety comes up, that we'd look to you 
that would come to you in prayer, that uh, we'd bring that anxiety to you, Lord. I pray that you'd give us a strength um, and a peace that could only come from you. I just thank you for how good you are. And I pray over each and every person, Lord. I thank you for, the, that for them taking this step tonight um, to seek out wisdom and um, guidance and clarity and steps to take. Uh, thank you for that first step tonight. And I just pray you continue to help them to take that next step um, that as they do this, that they'd find their next step and they'd find their next step from there, Lord, that uh, you just make those steps clear to each and every one of us, those personal next steps. And so again, we just thank you, God, for how good you are. And we pray this all in Jesus' amazing name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you guys so much. It was great to spend some time with you tonight. And I hope that this benefited you. Uh, again, reach out to us if there's anything else we can help you with. Um, if there's anything that comes up that you didn't think of right now, any prayer requests to come up, things like that, stay tuned for additional events like this where we're going to speak to different topics. And again, and just anything we can do to support you, we want to do that. That's what we're here for. And so let us know how we can help you guys. Uh, have an amazing night and uh, God bless.